Hello, Shamoy everybody. Welcome back to Wales in the Movies. It's been a long while. As you may or may not have noticed, I haven't been uploading videos in this shed for about six months now. I've been on a bit of a forced hiatus from the channel. This time away has offered me a bit of new perspective on what I should be focusing on here at Wales in the Movies. First off, I was never really feeling that old name of the show, The Eye Shed. I don't want these movie reviews to be defined by their shooting location and I'd like to take the reviews and the vlogs occasionally outside of this here space and into more ambitious settings because this channel started out as just uploading clips onto YouTube but then when I was watching the service more and more I realized that it's got much more potential than that and that I would become a reviewer of Welsh films. But I kind of got a little bit distracted by reviewing things like the modern cinema releases, which I'd still very much like to do here on the channel. Also guys, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. Don't tell many people. I've been a little bit scared to review the Welsh films of yesteryear. And here's the reason why. Many of them, perhaps you could say most of them, are noticeably lacking in quality in one way or the other. And I didn't want this channel to be a series of moans and gripes. You know, another Welsh person on his soapbox moaning about what Wales doesn't do, moaning about what Wales hasn't got, etc., etc. You're on your pants off. I want to be positive about the work that we have projected so far, and also I want to make some mates and some contacts in the world of Welsh film. So I've had to take a little bit of a step back and decide how. I'm going to review the Welsh film canon. This channel is here to review Welsh content, movies and TV. I want to continue the work of a man called David Berry by reviewing all the Welsh stuff from a Wales perspective in a Welsh context and that's what we're going to focus on from now on. And on this note, welcome to Cymru Views. <laughs> So, comedy views will not just be about movie reviewing, but we're going to start off by reviewing a movie that I feel very, very positive about, and that is A Llevergeth, known in English as The Library Suicides, from 2016. It's directed by Yeros Lynn, it is written by Fleer David, and stars Catherine Stewart, Sharon Morgan, Devan Duivo, and Ryland Tyfee. It's a story of twin sisters, Anna and Nan, who both work in the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth. These characters are both played by Catherine Stewart in a stunning double performance, and we'll touch on that a wee bit later. In the film's first moments, we witness the death of their mother, Eleanor, played by Sharon Morgan, a local celebrity author who commits suicide by throwing herself from the top floor of her apartment building. But is that really what happened? Just before she passes, Eleanor whispers a name to her daughters, which seems to suggest that this may not have been a suicide after all. The story then sees the twins put a plan in place to get revenge on the man they believe to have wronged their mum. Through the next 90 minutes, the story of what really happened and why unravels all through the tight claustrophobia of this one spooky interior location. 
Let's start with the good stuff. There are many, many things about a Llefrigaeth that I absolutely love and connect to many of the issues, both positive and negative, that I personally have with the history of Welsh cinema. First off, it's something approaching a firm genre film. A Llefrigaeth is a mystery thriller. It's not afraid to project a story of heightened reality that perhaps may not quite match up with the real life Aberystwyth that you know and love, or maybe you don't know and love. But this is the thing folks, movies are metaphors for life, not life itself. And a Llefrigaeth totally commits to its heightened premise without feeling the need that many Welsh films have done unfortunately to compromise itself by crossing genres and looking for cheap laughs or to exploit national stereotypes. On this note, the cast also totally commit to the story's vision. Now, I mentioned the lack of cheap laughs, but the actor Devan Duivel gives a superbly good comic performance as the recent parolee and security guard Dan. Honestly, the movie is quite dark in a lot of places and really needs this character for a little bit of light relief and also some audience identification. I'll round up all the characters later, but Dan becomes involved in the plot against his wishes, but very much in the spirit of storytelling and screenwriting convention. Also along for the ride is Eleanor's biographer, Eben, and it soon becomes clear that a lot of the mysteries surrounding the story are all somehow connected to the dead writer's past. My favourite bit about this story are the themes of a Llefrigaeth. They very much comment on not just the country it's made in, but also the art form that it's presented in. Running through the narrative are themes of memory and storytelling. As someone who studies modern and historic Wales and our life particularly on screen, I can tell you that these themes are at the heart of our survival as a culture and a country itself. The movie also explores the notion of who has the right to tell your story and I believe this is something that should be at the heart and the forefront in the mind of every Welsh patriot who's interested in our current relations with the rest of the UK. It is, I'm sure, no coincidence that the writer and the character of Elena, played by Sharon Morgan, is in the early stages of dementia. When I first started researching Wales on screen and Wales in the movies, I came across this book by a man called David Berry, and it opens with a quote from the famous Catalan filmmaker, Luis Buñuel. I'm not being cheesy, this quote touches, well maybe I am being cheesy, but this quote touches on so many elements of modern Welsh psyche that I can't read it to myself without getting some seriously raised goose flesh. It's time to go on a tangent. Wales is a country that is cut off from its own history. Welsh history is very rarely taught in Welsh schools. Of course, there will be the occasional exception, but I can promise you that this is the experience of most school children and students growing up in Wales, and of course, by extension, the UK. Hence, we are a country with no memory. Now, this is so much the case that a fella online recently petitioned the Welsh Government in order for them to use their powers over education to start teaching Welsh history in Welsh schools from a Welsh perspective. I personally had no idea that Wales even had a history until I started looking for myself in my 20s. And when you discover this history, it totally changes your perceptions of the whole place. There be Wales here! Isn't it crazy what we have to do in order to hear our own stories? So who do you think has the right to tell Wales' stories to Wales' people? Is it Wales or is it the UK? I know my answer. Okay, rant over, sorry, couldn't resist. Let's get on with things. Now going back to the movie, a library is of course a very appropriate setting for a story exploring such themes. And intrinsically linked to the themes of memory, storytelling, imagination, is the idea of language. And I'm happy to say, a Llefrigaeth is all in Cymraeg. Gwych. For the anally retentive among us, when people say, I don't speak a language, or I don't speak Welsh. What they of course mean is that I don't 
or more appropriately, I can't use that language. Using a language consists mainly of four skills. They are reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And the most important by far, in my opinion, of these are reading and listening. These are called the receptive communications. I personally greatly appreciate watching any movie, particularly if it's not shite, in any language that I can't use, which is of course all of them apart from English. It forces me not only to pay more attention to the script via the subtitles, but also the visuals, the compositions, the mise-en-scene, in an effort to make up for my own monolingual inadequate sensory deprivation. Returning slightly to a point I made earlier, this movie successfully avoids some of the frustrating and cliché tropes associated with Welsh productions of the past. And I don't just mean black and white mining movies from the 50s and 60s, I'm also talking about some of the more recent Welsh productions, such as the movie Ar Amadawiad, known in English as The Passing, and the very successful TV show A Gwish, known in English as Hinterland. We have an opportunity in the 21st century to project a more positive, a more modern image for the Welsh language with the stuff of movies. Now I'm talking about conflict, violence, angst, young people, and yes, even guns and sex. And one of the things that I love about Welsh language movies, particularly about the potential of Welsh language movies, is that they don't have to pander to British monolingual audiences who, I'm sorry to say, only really want to see us Welsh as a bunch of confused and incestuous leek-munching simpletons. All oh, right, there we are then. On for a video fest tonight? Catherine Stewart. Wow, absolutely wow. As somebody who read nothing about the movie before I went to see it in Chapter Art Centre, I can honestly promise you no bullshit. I had no idea whether I was watching two separate actresses or just the one. It is in fact Catherine Stewart who plays both roles and her twin performances are so subtle I honestly cannot praise it highly enough. You can catch Catherine in TV dramas such as Stella and Doctor Who and just recently the bilingual drama Bang which is still currently playing on S4C. It's very much worth a watch directed by Philip John and also goes in a sort of clear genre direction of Hlavregeth. Sharon Morgan is a regular Welsh actor who's appeared in such movies as Gedail Hennin, Grand Slam, Under Milk Wood and A Cercas. Considering her talent she's not in this movie as much as I personally would like but in the few scenes that she is in she injects just the right amount of pathos into her character to totally sell the role. The role of Eben played by Roland Telfy is unfortunately a bit underwritten. However, there is another standout in the character of Dan, played by upcoming Welsh actor Devan Dwyvo. Devan's becoming a bit of a regular on the old Welsh film scene. I first saw him in a movie called The Baker, which is very rarely seen, with Damien Lewis, set in Wales back from 2007. You can also catch Devan in the successful movie Pride and the aforementioned Ramazawiad, known in English as The Passing. In this film, he's the character with the clearest arc, if you like, and Devan totally sells the character's journey from cocky ex-con into a more sympathetic love interest and definitely well worthy of his recent Best Actor nomination at the BAFTA Comedy Awards, Diane Devan. The director is a man called Euros Lin, who's directed a lot of BBC television dramas such as Casualty, Inspector George Gently, Broadchurch, Black Mirror and Sherlock. And he's also recently taken a step into comic book territory by directing episodes of the TV show Daredevil. So most interestingly in relation to this movie, he also directed an episode of Doctor Who back from 2008 called The Silence in the Library. Now I can't really go back and watch these episodes, I just can't stand David Tennant's constant gurning, but if you are a fan of that show and a fan of this movie, it may be worth going back to check it out to have a look at some of the similarities and I believe they are there. Also, big time worthy of note is the screenwriter Freya Davith, who not only writes movies, but also novels in English and in Welsh. Now, the original idea for A Llefrigeth was to be as a movie, but before it existed on screen, it was in fact a book 
by the same title, written by Fliad David, and it won the Daniel Owen Memorial Prize at the National Eisteddfod back in 2009. Also, Fliad is a successful singer, songwriter, and musician, so you can go right ahead and hate her. I know I do. In all seriousness, though, hopefully Fliad is a well screenwriting talent to look out for in the future, and Dielchenwald for writing such a Welsh themed story. I don't personally have a fantastic visual eye, but this movie does to me on a few occasions feel a little bit like television. That could be due to the history of the director, it also could be due to the restrictions of this one interior location. I think it, it would have worked a little bit better if it had just taken a couple more trips outside. The movie's 90 minutes isn't all in this location, but probably a good 75 to 80 minutes of it are inside very small rooms of the library and interior Britain is a fundamentally uncinematic place. I don't think it's any coincidence that the most successful movies that are set on the island of Britain tend to be period pieces where you can put some atmosphere into the frame and just this yeah feels a little bit like television for me. On that note the movie is extremely well directed particularly in relation to the performances elicited from Catherine Stewart and it's also very well and efficiently edited by a man called Tim Hodges. Before the start of the movie you can see a credit for a company called Soda Pictures who seem to be involved in a lot of recent Welsh productions and researching this company more just recently I found they have been rebranded as a company called Thunderbird Releasing. So maybe it's worth keeping an eye out for this company and see if you can spot their logo before any Welsh films of the future. Also credits pop up for S4C, BBC Films, BFI and Film Company Wales, so well done to all those crew. Right, so connected to the point earlier about language, I have the website IMDB to thank for this little nugget. I often wondered why the Welsh title of A Llyfrigeth was translated into English as The Library Suicides, what with that extra word, and the reason it turns out is this. The Welsh word Llyfrigeth literally means book sell and the producers were smart enough to spot that this nuance of lingo was missing from the plain English title of the library so they decided to bulk it up with a bit more meaning and call it the library suicides and you know I can't work out which one is better as an English language user the library suicides or just the library I'd be interested to hear your takes on this as English and Welsh speakers down in the comments section so a little note about the location, Aberystwyth, if you're a visitor to Wales, really is an excellent place to visit. And the library itself is situated on the top of a hill overlooking what is a fantastically picturesque Welsh town. It's also an authentically Welsh town. If you go to Aberystwyth, you're gonna hear Cymraeg, the Welsh language, spoken in every public place, spoken by all sorts of different people of all sorts of different colors. Now, within the library itself contains a very interesting place that is close to my heart, which is the Screen and Sound Archive of Wales. I've been to this place a few times. I used it while making my graduation project as a film student. And it also now contains a movie called The Last King of Wales from 1922, which is the only film ever about a Welsh ruler and was discovered by a collector just recently back in 2010. This place is effectively Wales' film memory and isn't it just great to have a memory? As I said then, I'm a clever guess. Four stars for The Library Suicides. Really nuanced screenwriting, excellent performances and top-notch directing help set up a movie which comments excellently on some very Welsh themes and stands out firmly on the Wales movie shelf. Diane Pope. You can catch A Thlevergeth regularly shown on S4C. You can also watch it on the iPlayer without having to purchase it. So please go ahead, watch it on the iPlayer and support a Welsh movie. Or if you feel like supporting it even more, you can do what I did and buy the DVD. You can get it from numerous sources. It'll cost you 10 odd quid and it's well, well worth it. It's one of the best Welsh movies I've ever seen, if not the best. Please support A Thlevergeth and get it on DVD. 
Now, one thing I've learned since making YouTube videos is that when you've got a full-time job, two kids, no money, and ADHD, stop making promises about when your next video will be uploaded. On that note, I'm gonna contradict myself and say that I've been away busy for the last six months editing a documentary that I shot in the spring. Its working title now is Reclaiming Arthur, and it's gonna explore a lot of the whale's links to the original Arthurian legends, but not just that, it's gonna look at the comedy connections to many of the commercial mainstream movies that have focused on these stories over the last 50 years. It's looking like having a one hour runtime, and hopefully it'll be online in the Christmas holidays. Until then, keep your eye on the Twitter page and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed for the next episode of Comely Views. I'm not gonna tell you when it's gonna be, but hopefully soon, and you'll just have to keep an eye out for us, won't you? And on that note, please stay until the end of the credits because I've got a personal plea to make to all you Welsh movie fans and subscribers. Diolch yn am gwylio. Thank you very much for watching. ta -da -da. If you enjoyed this video then please drop it a like or subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. More subscribers equals more views equals we can make more Welsh content to put on the internet. If you appreciate what the channel is trying to do for Wales and its movie scene, please show your support as there's much more to come here on Wales in the Movies. We have more than 30 Welsh feature films to review in all their full comedy glory and still have plenty of video essays and original documentaries planned for the channel in 2017 and beyond. Tell your mates and subscribe to Wales in the Movies. Diolch.